Hi, I'm Matt Eland, and I want to talk to you today about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, and what the relationship is between the three of them. So, at the highest level, we have artificial intelligence, and artificial intelligence is all about anything that we do that tries to get a computer to emulate the behavior of humans or animals. Uh, I mentioned animals there because we actually have some specializations in artificial intelligence that surround uh, flocking behaviors of geese or birds or e even ants and fish. Uh, so there are, are, are some uh, AI algorithms out there that emulate animals instead of people. Uh, but you also have things that are they're trying to be as human-like as possible. An example of that would be conversational agents that you might see on a web page where they are trying to um, talk to you and, and, and interact with you. Um, a, a support representative is maybe not necessarily there, but you go to the site after hours and a little chat bot comes up and says, hey, what can I help you with? And you can type in what you're looking for and it can redirect you, answer common questions. And if it needs to, it can escalate things and connect you with a real human person. Uh, so you're seeing more and more of these conversational agents uh, on web pages nowadays trying to get you uh, to trying to help you while while reducing the load on the on their people um, and getting you service quicker. Um, you also have a broad category of decision based uh, or sorry uh, rules based logic and decision trees. Uh, these are really just more traditional programming environments where some developers have come up with uh, some rules. So. Um, let's say we're trying to do a, a loan, it might do a credit check and say, hey, if my credit score is below a certain threshold, then reject my loan. Otherwise, send it to somebody else for manual approval. Um, if my credit score is above a certain limit, maybe automatically approve it. That would be an example of a, uh, a decision tree. It's a very broad category of artificial intelligence, um, but the key here is that machine learning is not necessarily, or is, is not involved with this, uh, with this portion of AI. Uh, we also have very specialized artificial intelligence de dedicated to game artificial intelligence. Uh, this is anything from the behavior of non-player characters or enemies in the game world. Um, but you also see some specializations here around pathfinding, uh, behavior trees, uh, goal-oriented or, or goal action planning, or GOAP. Uh, these are all fields of artificial intelligence. Now, getting a little bit more specific is uh, machine learning. And any aspect of machine learning is, is artificial intelligence, but machine learning, what we add in machine learning, is the idea of applying mathematics to things. So we're now getting into the fields of statistics and probability, uh, we're getting into algebra, some calculus, uh, things like that, and we're applying machine learning techniques to try to solve a problem. We're trying to predict something either based on prior uh, inputs, or we're trying to have a computer sort of manually make sense of things. Um, some major categories we have in here, we have uh, classification uh, problems. So we're trying to find out if, if something is one or f of several different possibilities, such as um, we might uh, train a machine learning algorithm to um, approve or reject a loan or flag a, 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 a um, transaction as suspicious or not. That would be more of an anomaly detection scenario. Um, but these are all types of classifications. So trying to figure out what category something belongs to. Um, artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithms can sort of extrapolate from your data the relationships between things uh, without you necessarily have to having to program it in yourself, which is pretty cool. Uh, regression, uh, regression. I don't like the term regression terribly much, but it just means that we're trying to predict a numerical value uh, based on some past things. So if we were trying to predict the stock price, uh, that would be a regression um, algorithm. If we're trying to predict the temperature uh, that it's going to be next uh, next February, that would be uh, a regression algorithm. We're using our historical data uh, and we're feeding it into a machine learning algorithm and having it spit out a guess with a certain degree of accuracy um, as to what a, a certain value would look like. So given this date or uh, given a car with this, this uh, type of mileage and this manufacturer, or this number of accidents, something like that here, what would be the resale price that we would expect based on historical data? Uh, we also have clustering. Uh, this is more of having a machine learning algorithm go in and say, hey, wh what are these things are closest uh, to each other? Wh are there any groupings of my data? And it can ca actually kind of find groupings that you didn't even know necessarily existed. And it's looking at all the different aspects of your data. Um, 
which can help you identify things like uh, uh, marketing groups and uh, things like that. Um, so that's clustering. And the cool thing about clustering is you don't need necessarily historical data, it just looks at the data you have now. So that's a form of unsupervised learning versus classification and regression. You really need to supervise it, you need to tell it, hey, here's some historical data, here's what I'm trying to predict, go ahead and try to predict something. Um, all these things you uh, often use neural nets, they don't have to, but a lot of them use neural networks, which is a sort of a collection of nodes or neurons that try to emulate the structure of a brain. And these are really just mathematical calculators uh, that try to find relationships between things. And um, they're really powerful. They can find a lot of hidden relationships that you didn't necessarily uh, know were there. Um, but their drawbacks are that uh, when, as they get more and more complex, they can take longer to train. But also, it's harder to understand why a neural network is predicting what it's predicting. But it can really come up with some really cool things. Um, so that's the idea of machine learning. Now getting even deeper, we have the idea of deep learning. Oh, sorry, no pun intended there. Now deep learning is a, is a form of uh, machine learning where we are using neural networks of a sufficient depth and complexity. So we have additional layers to our neural networks, which lets them form more and more connections, which makes them form more inferences in our data. Um, now, training does take a little bit longer of time with deep learning, but they can often find relationships you had no idea were even there. Uh, and so deep learning is being applied to a lot of more advanced things involving computer vision, object identification, uh, things like that. So a lot of the really exciting things inside of the machine learning field are coming through deep learning. But it does take a while to train these things, uh, and it can be very hard to understand why a deep learning algorithm is coming up uh, with what it's coming up. So we have some transparency concerns there. Now we're working on all these things and uh, we're really improving uh, transparency in the forms of uh, being able to see um, sort of byproducts between uh, uh, neural nets uh, as we're structuring larger and larger things. Uh, but this is an existing concern that we're kind of looking at as an industry. Um, is this transparency factor for deep learning. But it's really exciting all these things we can do with uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm really excited about it. Data science is a really awesome field. It's very fun to get into and uh, there is a lot of mathematics, but a lot of that's abstracted by things that, uh, uh, that you can work with. And we'll talk more about that in a future video. But uh, again, I'm Matt Eland. Uh, I hope you found this insightful and helpful. I write more at accessibleai.dev so you can check that out. Uh, including an article on this very topic, which I'll link to in the description. You can also follow me on Twitter. Uh, and if you want you or other people like you to find my content, you know, go ahead and give it that thumbs up and subscribe. But uh, uh, thanks for listening.